Good evening and welcome to the curriculum subcommittee meeting of the Brockton School Committee, Tuesday, December 15th. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL chapter 30A, section 20. Pursuant to that order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the opening meeting laws requirements that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting is being, will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast channel 12. The public can access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. Uh, before we start with our agenda th for the evening, I'll do a roll call to establish a quorum. Uh, let's see, Mayor Sullivan, D'Agostino is here, Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minichon. <clears throat> Mr. Rodriguez. Mrs. Sullivan. Here. Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. We have our quorum. So for tonight's curriculum subcommittee meeting, um, our first item is the presentation of school-based strategic improvement plan at West Middle School. Um, and then item number two would be any other business to come before curriculum. Um, I know we have uh, a couple of folks from West with us this evening. Um, and I believe uh, Mrs. Saber McGuire, you wanted to uh, uh, start things off and, and make a few comments before they start. Yes, thank you, Mr. D'Agostino. First of all, good evening, everyone. And I know that the superintendent does expect to join us before the end of the meeting. So let me start by thanking the West team for being here um, this evening. We know that the team at West has been so committed to the work of sustainable improvement planning for the past few years. And and the commitment of your faculty toward this work hasn't faltered even through this pandemic. Um, and I've said previously, and I'll say it again this evening, uh, that tonight you'll hear from uh, the West team, the common thread that exists throughout all of the turnaround or sustainable improvement plans. And I think tonight might be your 10th uh, school presentation. And yet at the same time, you'll also hear what's unique to each plan. And in the case of West, what you'll hear is their commitment to culturally relevant teaching and how that really is truly a thread throughout their entire sustainable improvement plan. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it right over to Carlton and his team, Stephanie Carlton, Principal Campbell, I should say, and his uh, associate and assistant principals and let him do the introduction. So thank you, Principal Campbell. Good evening and thank you, Ms. Um, Saber McGuire. I was truly honored to be here to share with you all. I'll give you a little insight about our sustainable plan at West Middle School. But before I begin, I'd like to just thank um, a few people. I'd like to thank um, Mike Thomas, the superintendent, um, Tom Benicello, school committee uh, member, um, Sharon Walter was our district support um, advisor. Um, Mary Ann Palmer, who was actually played a direct role as far as assisting us from the state. Um, we also like to thank Stephanie Spillane and Jamie Assis, our assistant principal and associate principal, um, and our ILT and um, the teacher staff. They play a big part of what we are doing at West Middle School to turn around. West Middle School to make it successful and to move forward. So I really thank them for all the work that they've put in and all the you know, dedication and commitment to help West Middle School move forward. So as we look at our term plan, there are actually four target areas that we actually focused on as we looked at areas that we need to improve upon to help the growth of our students, whether it's social, emotional, or um, academically. So we are running 
through for these target uh, pre target practices that we need to uh, we'll discuss with you all. So uh, we'll take it out, take it first. I'll be looking at our first goals for our target practice. For, I want our turnaround practice is uh, goal number one. A school administrators will establish and monitor strong collaborative structures and support that increase the capacity of all staff to use data to monitor student learning and engage in intentional practices aimed at ensuring that all students have access to high quality instructions. And with that actually, uh, some of the benchmarks that you look at, I think um, we have, as we move forward because of the COVID, we had to uh, uh, revise our turnaround plan. And with some of the areas that we kind of focus in on as far as some of the benchmarks is um, technology. Um, so one of the things that we kind of focus on is how to use Schoology and how to use uh, Teams. So we wanted to become, have our students and staff become more fluent as far as using um, tech, um, the technology that they were given. So that, then that did include um, Schoology, Clever, um, Teams, um, and other software that was included. So these are areas that we concentrated on. And um, the next slide is um, some of the, uh, we had a tracking, a tracking system to actually help track students, um, attendance and academically for academic support. So all staffs in the building have access to, as we can work collaboratively um, to ensure that students are keeping up with the virtual learning. And uh, we have made strides um, to say the least, um, is we have made leaps and bounds since the spring. So I think we are headed in the positive direction. And then at the beginning, it was kind of frustrated and kind of tedious, but everyone seemed to adapt pretty well and kind of move forward in this area. So we really thank our staff for that. Um, so they, you know, and, and so we have done a successful job as far as you know tracking students. And this, uh, and this tool actually helped us um, and to monitor and to keep daily tracking or weekly tracking of students that need more attention, whether it's through a academic or um, attendance support. And if, right after, I'll turn it right over to uh, Mrs. Estes, our associate principal. Good evening, everybody. Can everyone hear me? <laughs> we hear you. Okay, excellent. I had my AirPods in to connect to my phone. So, okay. So uh, goal number two is that all teachers will work collaboratively to develop and incorporate common high quality data-driven standards-based classroom practices that promote rigor and higher order thinking across the curriculum. So if you look on the next slide, our benchmark one for goal two was by the end of October, all PLC meetings are facilitated using PLC protocols. So you can see there's a slide there that shows all of our PLC groups within Teams. So not only are we using our um, benchmark for goal one, um, we're also putting that into goal two. Um, so each PLC has their own team and within the team is uh, the agenda for each PLC meeting and any files that the team might need, um, as well as the meeting location link. So everything is all located in one spot, which is really, it, it's a helpful tool for everyone involved. So um, that is goal two, benchmark one, sorry, next page. <laughs> so you can see an example on the next page of a sample agenda. So for every agenda that we have, we let the staff members know what the meeting norms are. And those have been previously discussed within each meeting. So the norms are, are listed there. And any materials that the staff might need. Always it's laptops for remote learning. And then below that is the agenda and the items to discuss for the day. And you can also see on the left that it's a list of files so we, there's folders and files within the folders to keep everybody organized. So everything that they need is all in one, stop, uh, one spot. Next page. So goal number two, benchmark two, by June, 2021, 
PLCs will be sharing lessons in Teams. So our goal, um, we created a common instructional outline for staff to use. So that was passed out last year and that was um, discussed uh, within PLCs. And we had one or two um, common lesson plans that were done before COVID hit. So teachers are familiar with this process. And the next step is working on a structure to organize and work on lesson collaboration within Teams. And once that's completed, the lessons will be shared and uploaded to their Teams uh, file. So that is the goal for benchmark two. Uh, benchmark three, content-based PLCs will include implementation of new curriculum, review of student data, and include remote learning reflection. So in each PLC, um, the four major subjects, as you uh, probably are aware of, have new curriculum. Um, social studies has Newzella, science has Amplify, et cetera, et cetera. So the content PLCs will be focused on implementing and using these resources, um, especially ELA, they are deciding on theirs next month, I believe. And then once that is done, they are uh, consistently and um, reviewing data for students. So we have STAR data that we use. We are, our students are taking the STAR progress monitoring test about twice a month. And then they have the benchmarks uh, with three times a year. So there is benchmark in September, January, February, and then again in May and June. So we review that data as well. Um, common assessment data for uh, the um, subjects that have it, like English and math, is also reviewed within PLCs. So what we put on the right there is a sample agenda for a PLC that you can see how it's planned out. Um, definitely reviewing teaching, reflecting on how remote teaching is going, any strategies that um, allow for student engagement, um, review of common ed site data for, as this was a math PLC, I believe, star data review and common planning. So all the things that we incorporated into our plan are listed here on this agenda. All right, and I'm passing it over to Stephanie. Thank you, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having us tonight. So goal number three for us um, is very simple. All students have equitable access to high quality instruction. So as Jamie stated in the last slide, um, uh, that was an example of tomorrow's um, agenda for the math PLC. And it is a lot of reflective on all the virtual pieces. So one of the things we needed to do, uh, one of the benchmarks to meet this goal was that by term two, students will be assigned to win blocks that meet individual needs as determined by data. So the win block is our seventh period and uh, uh, win stands for what I need now. And it's, it's focusing on uh, a time where we can give interest interventions to our students. We are not meeting the term two goal, so we did push it to term three because of um, reflections through PLC and, and the um, stress level of uh, our students and our teachers as we started all of this virtual learning. So uh, term two, we are really uh, gathering all of our data to meet this goal uh, and started up in term three. So uh, this is just a sample of how we are uh, organizing the wind block. Uh, you'll see on Mondays, it's our time to complete Mathia. Yeah? Mondays are, are a half day live day anyways, as you know. So um, our period seven is really only about um, 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes. So this is where they can gather some of their Mathia minutes. And Mathia is the computer program that supports the Carnegie math program that they have been using. On Tuesdays, we did purchase through turnaround funds um, second step curriculum. So every Tuesday we are doing a lesson uh, from the second step curriculum and each of the grade levels has a different topic. So when we started this on December 1st, grade six had a lesson all about starting middle school and entering middle school. Grade seven was about helping new students and grade eight was a welcome back kind of thing. So each of the lessons is all uh, set uh, for them. There, there is no, um, they, they, can, they can go off the, the lesson and everything. And each of the kids is getting the same lesson for that per grade. On Wednesdays and Fridays, 
it was important to teachers um, to be able to conference with uh, students uh, on the workload during the, the work week. So this is a time for um, students to make up some work that they may have missed or if they were absent and, and needed to catch up with a teacher. Uh, they do have that flexibility during this time. Uh, and it is also time for some teachers to meet with students uh, and talk about the STAR assessment. Um, the STAR assessment, all the progress monitoring that we're doing, uh, it's important for the kids to know how they did and where they really did well on and where they need to improve on. So Wednesdays and Fridays are dedicated to that. And then on Thursdays, um, we didn't have four Thursdays uh, for the month of December, so you'll only see one uh, day of Lexia power up uh, time, but the other two are designated for star progress monitoring, one for math and one for reading. Uh, and again, uh, Jamie and I and uh, Carlton pull the reports from that, make sure that students did log on, make sure they did, they did a diligent job in um, in completing the assessment and then using that data with teachers in PLCs to uh, highlight those high risk students and see what they really need some help on. Uh, goals um, benchmark two is that teachers will indicate whether wind blocks are achieving the intended effects. So this is an in progress benchmark right now. Um, we, we will start gathering that data and we will start reflecting in PLCs um, on the agenda and have notes to uh, disseminate that information uh, and, and see how we're going to group those wind blocks. Benchmark three is the leadership team and SPED EL staff will develop an instructional strategy notebook as a teacher resource. So one of our um, big things was making sure that we were using all these strategies across the building. And one of the ways was to um, start making sure that everyone had a, a resource that was um, that had they had access to um, for certain things while they're lesson planning, while they're collaborating on lessons, uh, while they're talking with small groups or, or doing interventions. So these two ones are definitely an in-progress um, benchmark. And right back to you, Mr. Campbell. Thank you, Mrs. Spillane. Uh, our final and last target is target practice number four. Uh, the goal is to um, with shared understanding and cultural capacity, the West Middle School learning community will foster a school climate that celebrates community and culture. And we'll see what that looks like. Uh, for goal number four, benchmark one is by June for by June, the West will participate in a book study to actually to uh, experience cultural responsive practices uh, to explore cultural responsive practices. Something that um, the ILT did the, over the summer, um, a book study by Zaretta Hammer that deals with the brain and cultural responsive students and how to become more flexible and adaptive to cultural responses and how to deal better with cultural um, students. So I think that's uh, one of the strong areas that we also looked at. And also there was a um, ILT and staff that took part in the best practices for students with mental health challenges. And there was a PD during the first 10 days of school year. Um, this was facilitated by the building experts. So we've looked at those areas where our students um, need the areas that need to be addressed and to kind of um, focus on those areas to help our students here at West Middle School so that we could be better equipped to service them in um, these variety of ways. And as we, as we look uh, at music and culture, uh, the music, one of our teachers have decided to implement music into um, her classes and hopefully this can reflect through all of her classes by making it, making it multicultural, um, by having students share a part of who they are, a part of their family tr traditions and background, as far as, you know, and being incorporated in schools. Um, so this is a way that we hopefully can incorporate through music throughout the school and um, students can feel included in um, all types of ways, not even with um, the music, but also with our text. Um, so I think these are ways that we're looking to be very um, cultural and to reach out in a variety of ways to students from different all, from all different walks of life. So I think these are very important areas that we can help students to feel that they are part of the West family and we understand where they're coming from and we can relate to those students. And I think those are key to be able to relate to different culture and also to have a different a sense of respect and it's a different beliefs about different, you know, people's experience and background and culture. 
And goal number four, benchmark two, um, teachers will show increased growth mindset by using the equity, diversity, inclusion checklist. Uh, we will use this checklist in January and teachers will uh, save the information from the fall and they can reflect then and also in June. So we'll take a look at some areas like professional practice. Um, if I spend enough time reflecting on how my own implicit biases have influenced or impacted my treatment of my students, my colleagues or families. So we'll, so we'll do some self-reflection. We look back at some of the ways uh, we could, uh, how we could experience looking at things differently and how we can go forward looking at things um, down the road. Uh, another example is, have I learned ways to counteract, disrupt, interrupt my own implicit biases? And um, the bottom part is, and then you have proficient, developing, and emerging. So we have three categories that we do some kind of self, into, self inventory and self reflecting upon. And also at the bottom, we have, um, I actually dispelled the stereotypes of my curriculum assessments and materials. So we are trying to help uh, make sure that teachers are aware, you know, of some of the differences that uh, different that they have with students, so they can uh, be able to, you know, work with and collaborate and work with students, and not only students but staff as well to be more effective. Um, have I previewed my curriculum and my materials regularly to check and make sure? I can supplement my curriculum, materials, and other resources that help to dispel stereotypes. So we are tackling these issues as far as biases and stereotypes because we want all of our students to be included. Um, benchmark three, um, students' um, positive response will increase on school survey. Um, there will be, um, we will do a vocal survey for all students and that's to get a feel of the climate, what the climate's like, do students feel safe, do students feel comfortable, uh, do students feel like the school has their values at hand, as far as they're talking about their cultures, are they feeling included? So this is kind of the survey that kind of give us a brief rundown of how students feel about the schools that they attend. And I think this really helps us, um, it kind of could address some of those issues that students are having. I mean, and we'll do that in um, February, hopefully by the end of February um, vacation and also at the end of the school year. And then we have um, goal number, uh, my benchmark number four, um, students engagement and participation and online learning will increase to 80% um, by 61521. Uh, I think we have started to head in the right direction. I think we've been very positive. Uh, the participation rate is up now, but we would like to get it to be consistently at 80% so that all our students can, uh, and one of the ways we will do this is we will have a call log. Uh, we can reach out to parents and make sure that they're playing a part. And we also uh, you know, do home visits as well. Uh, so when we look, next slide please, Mrs. Uh, Spillane. So one of the areas that we try to look at is uh, trying to keep parents engaged. Uh, I know this is a, this technology, this virtual learning, remote learning, whatever you want to call it, is new to a lot of the parents. It's new to um, a lot of the students. Um, they still have to develop the skills and the know-hows to use virtual learning. So we try to keep parents in the loop. Um, as well as other guardians to make sure that they understand what's going on, um, even though they may not know how to use the technology. So they can, and then one of the things that we try to look at is areas that, you know, we can help them be more involved with by having characteristic traits of the month, like responsible, kindness, respectful, flexibility, adaptability, critical thinking. And, um, you know, as we look down the list, we see um, in February, March, April, May, and June, it goes right on down the list as far as, you know, acknowledging some of the characteristics that students have developed throughout the month and they are being rewarded for that. So uh, we do take the time out to go out and visit homes and give out these certificates to students uh, to acknowledge their achievements. So that's something that the administration, administration team does uh, do during the months. And we have done it in, uh, I believe in September and October, and hopefully we'll be doing it again soon in December. So we try to make sure that parents are involved. And hopefully you can see that in our next slide um, as you look at our newsletter. So we try to stay in the in crowd. We try to stay up as far as 
you know, keep staying in the loops there with the social media aspect um, during these times that make sure that we kind of keeping kids involved, parents involved, and the know how and, you know, what's going on. So I think these are all key, whether it's Snapchat, Facebook, whether it's, uh, you know, we have our own school page. We try to keep it up to date and we try to make sure that people are active. And we also want to acknowledge our students and as well as our staff about the great work they're doing. And we want to commend them everyone at this time because we know it's not easy and it's a challenging time but we are getting through this and um and i commend like i said i commend my our team our staff our parents our students they have been doing an awesome job during this process and um i want to just continue to you know encourage them as we move forward and with this term 21st century learning um, it, it, it came a lot sooner than i anticipated so but it came and uh, we are adjusting and I believe we have, like I said, made leaps and bounds as far as using the technology and adapting and making people feel more comfortable with the technology that we have used. So these are the target areas that we have decided um, to chose um, during this um, transition with the COVID. And um, like I said, um, it's an honor to do this and we want to just you know, keep moving forward. Uh, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know that whatever it is, we can overcome it. We have the tools, we have the people, and you know, it's great to be with a great staff, a great team to make sure that our kids are succeeding right in our my hometown. So I, I love what I do, and I love the opportunity that we had to be a part of this turnaround process, and hopefully we continue to uh, strive for excellence and to be better uh, even further like, down the road. So we thank you all for your time um, that you have given us, and you know, any questions you may have, feel free. Well, first, um, Mr. Campbell, I want to thank you and your team for joining us tonight and sharing this presentation with us. Um, and, uh, you know, your entire staff at West, we know that, you know, there's a lot that goes into the work you're doing and, and the committee certainly appreciates that and recognizes the significant effort and work that, uh, that you know, you guys are putting in. Uh, a couple of comments for myself and then I'll, you know, uh, give the, mem the members of the committee an opportunity as well. <clears throat> the other members, I should say. Um, two things that I just wanted to comment on that I, I thought were important. Under professional practice, um, I love that, you, you know, you talked about that self-reflection um, piece um, under professional practice. That's so important. And with some of the, everything going on today, probably more important than, than ever. And um, so I was glad to see that that's, that's a part of of the professional practice uh, component, uh, and it's it's tough to do you know, for anybody. Um, so, um, and then the other thing, when you talked about participation, and that's something that that this committee has been um, watching closely and very concerned about, as I know that all of us are, uh, especially with COVID and remote learning and just everything. Um, so I was glad to see that you know you're you're watching it, and and also much very importantly. You have a plan of what you're going to do to try and and get more engagement and get parents involved in the home. Is you know you have a, a plan of, of of action to to do you know to work on that. So uh, I definitely uh, appreciate that and Thank you. The Thank you. on it. So um, with that, um, I'll open it up to uh, comments from other members of the committee. Does anybody want to comment or question? Um, Mrs. Mendez, please, the floor is yours. Hi, um, thank you for that presentation. I actually, I think you're the only school that I think I heard has an Instagram. I think that's so like the times that we're living in now, especially virtually. Um, I really enjoy hearing about the tracking system and the PLCs and how teachers are sharing resources with one another, especially among grade level, that's so critical, that collaboration. I guess I just have a wonder so um, I saw that you guys are using data to be able to make the wind blocks to see like what students need. I was wondering, is there any data to see um, if we can make blocks where we're challenging students, like students that are actually advanced, where we're advancing them or challenging them? So um, with that interventions, I um, it's not only interventions when 
students are falling behind. We do want to use that data to um, to enhance the curriculum for students that, that are ahead of the game too. So when we do look at data, we will group them um, according to whatever needs for that student. And if that need does show that um, there, are, there are groups of students within grade levels that need something more than the curriculum um, grade level wise that they're in, we will definitely, um, that is an intervention. So, so um, it, it will be that end too. Thank you. Great question. Thank you for that. Thank you, Cynthia. Anybody else? Mr. Sullivan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Calvin. Uh, Mr. Campbell. Yes, sir. Your presentation was fabulous. You and your team deserve a lot of credits, and uh, it was great. I had two comments that I really liked. One was how you and your staff are seeing things differently now, it, which is true because everything is different now. It, even the way we go to school is different. Everything is different. And the other part that I really thought, Mark Dagostino mentioned it as well, but you're keeping the families involved and up to date on the students, which I think is a real good move. Uh, kudos to you. And thank you for a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comment from the committee? Okay. All right. Well, again, thank you for all the hard work you and, and the staff at West are doing. Um, and uh, again, for joining us tonight, right before a holiday. I know it's a busy time of year, so we appreciate all of you being here and um, you know, keep up the good work and, uh, you know, if there's, however we can, as a school committee support, um, West, please, uh, let us know. Yeah. Thank you all for the hard work, your teams, um, your teachers, all the work you do, Carlton, Stephanie, and Jamie, uh, and we know you work hard with your team and how much time and effort is put in. Um, and we really appreciate it. So please pass that along to the staff. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Mr. Vice Chairman, I just wanted to echo the sentiments to uh, Mr. Campbell and, and Ms. Spillane. Um, I mean, everybody at, at West should be applauded. And I just want to thank you all for that wonderful presentation. And uh, have a good holiday season and stay safe, everybody. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. All right. Um, well, um, if there's no other question or comment, uh, we can move on to the next item for the evening. Um, all right. Is there any other business to come before the curriculum subcommittee? Anything, Mike? No? That's okay. it. All right. Seeing no further business to come before the curriculum subcommittee, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. A motion to adjourn by Mrs. Mendez, properly seconded by Mr. Sullivan. I'll call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. Okay, D'Agostino is a yes. Um, Ms. Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minichello. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. The curriculum subcommittee committee meeting is officially adjourned. Thank you for your time. We'll see you all in about 10 minutes for our next meeting.